Syscot are using their active for the configuration of namespace. Nothing in the constructor. My configure button is just going to use inline XML. And I'm not suggesting you do this in a production app, obviously. But it's useful for uh, this type of thing. So I'm declaring uh, an instance of XML document, part of the uh, framework, full configuration, initializing it to a new XML document. Then I'm just using the load XML method to load inline XML. Now you can probably guess what this is doing. It's basically got a WAP provisioning doc element. It says this is a provisioning script. Characteristic with a type of browser favorite <coughs> is going to go away and create me a browser shortcut on the favorites list. Within browser favorites, I can specify a sub characteristic which is actually the name to give the shortcut. So I'm going to create a shortcut to Microsoft Home. And then I specify the parameters, name, URL that uh, specifies that this is uh, the URL to use, the value, and I've just got the standard Microsoft uh, Home page in slash slash slash. So that gives me uh, an instance of the XML document uh, type with my XML loaded. I can then just Call configuration manager. So you'll notice this is a static method. I don't need to instantiate configuration manager. Configuration manager process configuration, passing in my configuration document, and true requests that it returns metadata about the results of um, applying this provisioning script. So I catch the return XML results and assign them to an XML document result, which you would normally then go away and process however you felt fit. Just so you can see I've done it, I've got a message box. So deploy this final demo program. So we'll accept that. Now again, just so you can see that nothing is fiddled, I'm going to go into Internet Explorer, what's my favourites? Come on. And as you can see, all I've got in my favorites list uh, are the, the inbuilt orange favorites and one to Windows Mono. So I'll just close that, hit my configure button, and I'll just go and process that configuration script. Configuration complete. I go back to IE, and into my favorites list, there is my Microsoft Home. Okay. Yeah, oh, thank you. That doesn't hurt. So that's it. Those are the seven new managed APIs that we have uh, available to us. So as you've seen, uh, that's all wrapped up in the new Microsoft Windows Mobile Class Library. It is. Just to reiterate, part of the Windows Mobile Fiber SDK stroke operating system platform you cannot use this on 2003 devices by installing CF2. As you see, we've got application level APIs in there uh, for accessing things like the uh, Outlook mobile data. We've got um, sorry, application levels, we've got the platform level APIs that give us access to system information, like cameras, cradles, all that sort of thing. Allows us to really go a lot further with our application than we've been able to do uh, before. Certainly but before uh, this, it would have taken a lot longer and a lot more code and it would typically have had to be native. So one of the sort of side benefits of this is that it allows you to move away from C++. Now there's nothing wrong with C++, but as you've seen, with these managed APIs, the very small amount of code you need to do things that would otherwise take significant amounts of C++ from a productivity point of view, it's hard to justify spending the time writing the C++ unless you need that extra little bit of performance that you might get. As you've also seen, the managed APIs are not just a straightforward uh, wrapper around the, the native APIs. Uh, particularly in cases like the Pocket Outlook API, they've really cleaned the um, interface up because there's a really elegant, natural, and intuitive uh, way to access the, uh, the PIM data. And all the other APIs are very, very straightforward, as you've seen. And one of the side benefits of all this is that uh, you get away from a lot of P-invoke calls. 
Because even if you wanted to um, call some of these native APIs previously without writing C++, you typically fill your code up with a whole bunch of uh, platform invoke declarations. So all in all, um, for me, this is one of the biggest wins for developers in Windows Mobile 5, access to all this rich functionality uh, very simply and very easily. I've mentioned this earlier on today. The